to another Mando Lessons Live. I'm your host, Baron Collins Hill. It's great to see you all. Got a chat full of people already, which is what I like to see. Got Lindsay in BC. We got Edward in California. Uncle Bobby. Heidi. Adele from Nova Scotia. Halifax. Good to have you here. Jim from Georgia. Uncle Bobby. Oh, I already said Uncle Bobby, but Uncle Bobby's always here, so he deserves two welcomes. Um, let's see, Joe, Brianne, Betsy, James, Edward, Jeff, Mason, Lewis, Sherry, Ursinas, Rick, Keith, CM John 24, Ant Man, Jane, <laughs> Betsy, and Jim. I think I already said a bunch of those twice, but. That's, that's what you're going to get today. All right. <laughs> Repetition is uh, one of my favorite things. That's why I play fiddle tunes. Hope you're all doing well. I'm having a good start to my day here in Oregon. Hope you're all warm and safe and COVID-free. Uh, anyway, here we go. Let's see. If So the way these work, if you haven't uh, seen them yet, or if you haven't been here before, if you haven't been here before, let me know in the chat. Uh, great to always hear from first timers. Maybe how maybe everybody put in how long you've been playing mandolin, or what you're excited about playing. The way these work is it's an hour of Q and A. So if you've got questions, I can try to have answers. I'm also happy to uh, play some traditional tunes that are in the public domain, so I can't do any covers or anything like that. But I'll have fun with uh, whatever I can get into here. Gonna move some mics around a little. All right, let's see. See if I can see anything in the chat that requires attention already. Some chat of across the pond. It's Mando Day. That's the truth. Yeah, it's a good day. Got Dave Benedict right before me, and then me, and then right after me. Not mandolin specific, but uh. Got Matt and Shannon Heaton doing a little uh, Irish session. That's always a lot of fun. What do we got here? It's cold. It is cold a lot of places. It's back to normal temperatures here in Oregon, or at least Western Oregon. But um, we had a cold snap right, right after Christmas that was colder than normal. 
Still not as cold as I'm used to in Maine. I hear it's real cold in Maine as well. So I hope you're all staying warm. Let's see, all right, all kinds of great chat. Great to see everybody getting to know each other. Depth of field looking good with the new cameras. Yeah, so the, the, my favorite thing about these cameras, and I, last week I didn't have the mic attached properly, so the sound should be a little better. My favorite thing about these cameras is I got autofocus. I can like zoom in and show you stuff. I'm not locked in one position, you know? It's, I'm, I'm excited about it. With the old cameras, I try to get as much depth of field here to uh, just to like get myself off the background so you can distinguish me and the mandolin from the insanity behind me, um, but because I was using manual lenses, because my old cameras didn't do autofocus great in video mode, I had to kind of stay in one spot, and if I shifted, then I would go out of focus, and it was bad news. But now, i got autofocus. I've entered the 21st century. Feeling good. Glad it's coming through all right. Maricela, apologies if I'm not saying your name correctly, says, played mandolin when I was young, but not played after 40 years. I'm trying to get back in. Awesome. Well, welcome. Glad you, glad you picked it up again. Whoa, where's an us? This is negative 20. Is that, is that Celsius? Well, I guess negative 20 is a, is it like negative 40 where it's uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit are the same? Um, but yeah, that's cold, no matter what way you cut it. Cool, glad you're enjoying the old whole Neil. Yeah, I've been enjoying this thing a lot. Ooh, I don't know that tune, Jim. Jim says, trying to learn a simple French tune by ear. I won't try to say it because my French is terrible. Uh, but I, I love French tunes. Do you run a humidifier in the winter to keep your instruments from drying out? In general, yes. I lived in Maine for most of my life and would always run a humidifier, not only for my instruments, but just for me. You know, if it, if it stays below freezing for a long time, the humidity is dreadfully low. So I would usually have a house or room humidifier or at least a little humidifier in the case of instruments. But um, that turns into a lot of little humidifiers when the background looks like mine. Um, but now I live in Oregon and it is like... 60% humidity almost all year round, so um, I haven't had to worry about humidity in this game. I'm actually looking for a dehumidifier right now for the house because it's it's so uh, so tight that anytime we like boil water for water water for pasta, <laughs> anytime we boil water for pasta, um, the whole house steams up and all the windows steam up. So gotta gotta get a little dehumidifier going in here. Seven years mando, two years tenor guitar. Banjo is next on the list. Four string banjo or five string banjo, Jane? You can't go wrong with either. Oh, cool. James has just recently found out that my luthier making my mandolin bought some rosewood from Stefan Sobel, maker of your Sittern. Very cool. I look forward to it. You got a. I'm excited. I've heard so much about these things over here. Your, your custom build over the years that I'm excited to hear it and see it when when the time comes. Ooh, oh, now you're going Octave Mando. That's very exciting. All right, I love the chat. I love it when I can't keep up with the chat. I promise I'll get to some music and some mandolin questions. Just trying to trying to keep up here. There's so much talk of the weather. I love talking about weather. Awesome. Kelly's at the gym and been learning mandolin for four months. That's what I like to hear. Multitasking. I wish I could multitask. I'm a terrible multitasker. Any tips for practicing... This is from Heidi. Any tips for practicing strumming? I'm having trouble with doing up and down strokes with the tunes. Definitely. So a couple things. Um, one is whenever you're practicing strumming, you should be thinking like 90... You should be paying 90% attention to your right hand. And don't really worry what, about what's going on in your left. One exercise I like to do is just use the instrument as a percussion instrument. And I'm just going to do something here real quick. How do I do this? I'm learning the new cameras, but I want to. I can't, 
Can't adjust that. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm just trying to make it a little darker. It's kind of bright. Oh, I know what I can do. Does that help? Yeah, that's a little better. Um, maybe. Anyway. Um, I, I like to use my instrument just as a percussive instrument. So you can just like mute the strings to get a nice percussive sound. And then get get your right hand moving. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And just do this a lot. You can play along with recordings. Um, you know, just put on your favorite record and try to be the drummer in your favorite band. And just get that right hand down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, going. Because then all of your focus is on your right hand. You're not getting worried about like, oh, am I playing the right chord in my left hand? Things like that. You can try using it as that kind of bass strum sound that's normally that sound. Bass strum, bass strum. You know, just experiment. Also, because you're not worried about like chords and notes in your left hand, you can focus on being like extra groovy with your right hand rather than sounding like this. Which sounds like this in the right hand. but it's a little sterile, it's a little kind of robotic to my ear. You can go, same tempo, start putting a little swing in it. So just do that with your favorite record on, you know? You don't even know the chords, you don't even know anything. Just be the drummer. Keep that right hand going, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Up. You can also do it without an instrument in your hand, just like, often I'll like have a pick in my hand and just play on my shirt. Something like that. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Um, anything you can do, like, you know, so much of anything kind of strum pattern related or rhythm related, so tied to the right hand and it's so tied to just doing it over and over and over. So anytime, um, you can get your right hand in that down up down up motion the better what was that first tune from edward that was whiskey before breakfast great reminder so uh last week uh i thought it was the whiskey before breakfast week but uh then realized that it was the 8th of january last live stream so we had to do the 8th of january a great tune and we did that and now it's time to do whiskey before breakfast so we're going to play that tune at the end of the hour as a jam along Great classic kind of old time tune that's also made it into bluegrass and kind of a universal tune at this point. And uh, we'll play it at the end of the hour. It's a great one in the key of D. Ursana says, Baron, how do you keep up practice on all the tunes in your repertoire? <laughs> the short answer is I don't, but I'll keep reading your question. Uh, I'm getting to the point where I'm spending so much time on new tunes I'm learning. I'm neglecting old tunes. That's totally normal. That's just kind of how it goes in a lot of a lot of senses. You know, like, we can only play so many tunes if, you know, I don't know how many tunes I actually know. No, I feel like there's, you know... I, I think of tunes in different categories. There's like the tunes that I know and that I can start and that are sort of like, you know, top of my brain. If I think of my uh, tune repertoire as like a big pot, you know, you got all the like the, the very top that maybe oil, like the, the layer at the top of the soup. That's the stuff that I can, you know, be like, OK, yeah, this tune is a tune that I've played a lot and it's stuck in my head and I, I know what the name is, I know what key it's in, I know how it starts, I can get it going. I would say that's like 2% of the tunes that I know. Uh, and then, I don't know, the next, or maybe let's call it 5% just to make the math easier for me. And then the next like 25, 35% is tunes that if I like look it up, I can, make it happen let's say 25 percent so now we're 30 total 25 percent is tunes that like 
is a little bit of a struggle to get started. I need to like, oh, how does that go? What what is the uh, uh, uh? maybe look up the first phrase? Um, you know, get a little help from whatever source I can to get it going. And then let's see, we're at thirty percent, so we got seventy to go. The next thirty percent is tunes that like I can only play when other people are playing them. Like it goes for a lot of Irish tunes, like. Somebody will play a tune, I'm like, oh yeah, my fingers know this, and clearly I learned it at some point. Uh, but that's that's that. And then the last 40% is tunes that I just, like, I maybe, it, they feel like that set of tunes that I can only play when other people are playing them, but maybe I only know, like, 75% of the tune, so it's like, oh yeah, it's got, maybe it just has borrowed phrases from other tunes, I'm like, yeah, I know that phrase, and then the tune kind of falls apart. So... You know, the more tunes you learn, it's a natural progression to go through, like, learning a bunch of new tunes, but then it's hard to kind of, you know, keep them all in the repertoire. And, and it's 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 tricky talking about this in uh, this day and age, because you can't just go out and, you know, go to pubs every night and or jams or whatever it is and, like, get together with regular groups and, you know, play these tunes. Repetition is the key. So, you know, what I do is I make playlists in my music library of like tunes that I know and I just put them on and then we'll play along with those um, just to kind of you can put it on random so you never know what tunes gonna come up um, and it sort of simulates the session there's also the, um, what are the fin session um, from the uh, Irish cultists uh, great if you're into Irish music they have a couple albums that are just kind of classic tunes. I, I made a lesson about that not too long ago. Guitars on the agenda, very fun. Oh, that's nice. Uncle Bobby and Lewis are talking about traveling, and apparently Lewis has got an event where instruments are available for use if you don't want to travel with it. That's awesome. Yeah, I've got to do some traveling in the spring with some instruments, and that's not not my favorite thing to do. Yeah, Ant Man said it well. I find it best to keep up on songs I know by playing them with others and work on new tunes tunes during solo time. Yeah, that's that's sort of how I feel, and it really is like you'll go, or at least speaking for myself, I go through phases where I'm like, I just want to play the stuff I know. To I'm bored of the stuff I know. I just want to learn new tunes. And you're not, it's not all going to stay in, like, you know, top-level instant recall. And that's okay. It's all part of it. Ooh, nice. More, more info from James on the build. Now builds. Uh... All right, let's see. Yeah, don't really have anyone to play with right now. Same here. Um, yeah, you know, I think that the best thing that I know to do at this point is, like, play along with records, you know, find kind of learning resources, like the, the those cultist recordings for the Irish stuff, um, you know, watching... You know, the great thing about YouTube is it's got that little gear in the corner so you can slow stuff down. You know, make make playlists on YouTube, make playlists in your music library of tunes you know. Um, figure out how to turn down the speed to sort of where it feels good to you. And go from there. Have I already t covered the tune Salt Creek? I believe so. I'm 99% sure that's on my website, uh, but I'll play it a little bit just because I haven't played any music. Quite a while here. Nah. I guess I am in tune.
<laughs> the rough and rowdy version of Salt Creek. Excellent. Yeah, that's kind of a, a tune. Speaking of tunes that are on instant recall, I would say I can remember how that tune goes maybe 40% of the time. So you got lucky. <laughs> but thanks for the request. All right, let me catch up again. A little bit of talk about kind of getting, yeah, it's tricky with like Zoom and, and Discord and, and like kind of internet video stuff a, a good way to because you can't play you know like in time one thing you can do is just kind of take turns of one person plays the tune and mutes themselves so they can't hear what the other person is doing and the other person gets to play so you know if i'm jamming over zoom with ursinos like i'll turn my speakers off and play a tune Ursinos can play along with me and sound like we're jamming. And then I'll say, okay, I'm turning my speakers on. You turn yours off. You play one. So, you know, one person is playing on their own, but the other person gets to jam. You just switch them back and forth like that. That's a, a decent way to do it. Yeah, it's uh, gonna talk about uh, practice structures. You know, it, it takes, I always kind of try to, whatever I'm excited about, I kind of go for that. You know, if I'm excited about playing a particular tune, I'll just do that, because it'll get my fingers moving, uh, get into stuff, and then, you know, try to balance the stuff that you have a lot of fun with, with the stuff that you've sort of diagnosed in your own playing as something you gotta work on. That would be awesome to have a, a virtual jam on the Discord. I don't know how that... I mean, you just go around the circle, I guess, and, uh, you know, have one person turn on... Or have... You know, you could... Uh, you know, like, like I was just saying, have one person kind of lead a tune and then switch through and through. And that's great practice, too, you know, to be the person in the hot seat. It's a little bit uh, intimidating, but, you know, it's, it's the more you do it, the better you get. All that sort of stuff. Yeah, James says, before COVID, was planning to move to Glasgow where there are sessions every night. Instead, I've been home trying to ready myself for sessions as and when I can. Yeah, it's a tricky time, but uh, when that time comes, just, uh, you know, jump right in. You know, you're going to be in over your head. Anytime there's kind of new, a new public musical thing to do, you're going to be in over your head. That's, you know, I've been playing for 20 years and I moved to... Oregon and immediately it was a whole new set of tunes and a whole new set of people was like okay all right and you know now it's been not an option for a long time but still managed to make a couple friends out here and you know you just got to dive in and be okay with not knowing a lot of the tunes and and then the more you go the more of those kind of specific tunes to your area you'll start to re recognize nice I think James found some found some good stuff anyway. Awesome. Well, I, I like the idea of what's there's some chat in here about a, a group jam. I hope it gets going one way or another. Cool. The Berkeley Old Time Society, I think that's the name, hosts a jam every week on YouTube. That's good to know about. Glad Lewis has got some, some pandemic buddies. Salt Spring, Salt Creek, Salt River. That's the problem right there, James. It's salty out there. Yeah, Salty Doug. Do I know any Italian tunes? I do not, hit, man. I'm, I am not up on my Italian. I, I feel like maybe I'm a, I'm a poser because I got that uh, uh, Italian bullback mandolin back there. So it looks like I might know some Italian tunes, but I don't.
When I want to learn it, this from Heidi, when I want to learn a tune, it's hard for me to do up, down, up, down. Uh, even if I learn it slowly or a section at a time, I always just end up doing downstrokes. So one thing you can do, if you're, if you're a music reader, one thing you can do is um, just write out, you know, over every note. You know, if it's all, if it's a measure of all eighth notes, it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And so that down, up, down, up pattern is always the same over that measure. And if there's not a note there, then there's just not a stroke there. Um, you know, so you might have down, up, down, up, up, down, up. Um, another thing you can do if you're not a music reader is take a tune that you know, let's say Flop-Eared Mule, a tune that's got a good collection of long and short notes is helpful for this. Um, you know, maybe you've got this tune. And turn the whole thing into eighth notes. Again, you know, focus 90% on your right hand. And then just try to, you know, make sure that's going. And then just try to get the tune under your left hand. extra eighth notes, you get... And if you like, visually, if you watch my hands, and maybe my right hand doesn't make connection with the strings, you can't tell if I'm playing all eighth notes, kind of like that, or so if my right hand misses the strings, it looks like this. One, two, three, four. Or... You know, it's... Uh, it looks the same and visually and kind of mechanically with your right arm. Your right arm's... You know, if you're doing all downstrokes... Oops, sorry. Uh, you know... Your hand has to come back up to get the next downstroke. You can't, you can't do two downs in a row um, unless you're on different. Like if you're on your E string, you can't do two downstrokes in a row on the same string. You know if you're, you can do that, which is not what you're supposed to do. Um, but you know, in order to do two downstrokes in a row, your hand needs to come back up. So make connection with the string as your hand comes back up. There's a little thought on pick direction. Brian says, any tips for the beginner intermediate player in joining a jam for the first time? Jam etiquette. Uh, yes, I do. So the first thing to do, and this is what I do regardless, you know, this is what I do myself, is go at least once. Don't bring an instrument. Um, well, I guess it depends on, like, you know, go without the expectation to play at first. And if people are like, yeah, come on, like, take out your instrument, by all means, do it. Um... But like when I go to a, a session, I usually either, if it's in like a pub and I can do other stuff, um, I just won't bring an instrument and just go and listen, sort of see see what the session looks like. Is there one person leading all the tunes? Are they are they kind of passing it around? What is, what is the general vibe? Does it seem like a friendly group? Um, maybe you say, oh yeah, I, I recognize some of these tunes. Or maybe you hear a tune every once in a while, like, hey, I really like that tune. I don't know what it is. You can say, hey, what's the name of that tune? I'd like to learn it. Um, they'll tell you the tune, and then you can go look it up. Um, that way, people know, like, oh, you, you play music, you're, you're interested in kind of learning. Um, and then from there, um, in terms of, you know, and then, you know, bring an instrument. If it's, you know, if it's a community jam that's open to all, definitely bring an instrument, um, even if you don't play it the first time. Uh, or, you know, just kind of go and see see how things, see how things roll. You got to get a sense of of what it's like first, even if you don't 
end up playing the first time or two. In terms of jam etiquette, that can vary a little bit um, depending on the the peculiarities of the, like the session itself. Like there's some sessions that are like an extreme example is like a a no accompaniment Irish session where there's no guitar or no um, bazooki or anything like that. Um, so if you're a guitar player and you don't see any guitars and it seems like maybe there should be a guitar, it could be a no a no accompaniment session. That's not super common, but it is out there. Um, and then there's so, some sort of genre specific um, etiquette of like how many times through a tune do you play? If it's an old time session, you're probably playing five or ten times through the tune. If it's an Irish session, it's probably three, maybe four times. And that can vary, again, depending on where you're at. Sometimes even just two. Um, so I think going and listening the first couple times, get a sense of the session, try to pick up on any cues you can, which is easier to do when you don't have an instrument in your hand. If you're trying to follow along and figure out the jam etiquette, that's that's a lot of multitasking. And as I said, I'm not a, I'm not a great multitasker. So, uh, and then from there, just be, you know, be, be like generally mindful and courteous of like not, if you don't know a tune, don't try to learn it loudly on the fly if you feel like you're kind of uh, interrupting the flow of other people playing music. And don't, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, and don't, but also don't be afraid to be in over your head. If you don't know a tune, you can listen. If you know, if you don't know a tune, but you know the chords, you can try the chords if that seems like something that other people are doing. Um, if you're going to be over your head and that's totally fine. I think the right level of being in over your head is where you get the most improvement in your playing. And don't be afraid to ask questions like, can I join you? Um, what was that tune? Um, things like that. And it is tricky with etiquette because it does vary uh, from session to session. It does vary um, kind of genre. Um, but just the more you're listening, the more listening and kind of scouting out you can do, the better. Ah, tips for killing the nervousness about joining a jam. I think, you know, scoping it out beforehand is, is helpful. And you just gotta, you gotta do it. Um, I am not an, a particularly like... I, I get plenty nervous, like trying to meet new people and 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 meet new and like go to new sessions and jams and things. Um, but the more you do it, the better you get. I never thought I would be like. I don't know if this counts as like public speaking, but this is not something I ever saw myself doing. But here I am sitting here, hosting this every week, and I love it. Um, so you just got to do it, and the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it. Hey, Alan, good to have you here. Better late than ne better late than never. Can't talk today. Do you know what the top wood is on the cittern? Uh, I think it's red. Is it redwood? Or cedar? I might be able to look at it. I don't honestly remember. It's dark. I got, a, I got too many instruments in my hands here. So this cittern, it's, it's definitely dark. I would guess redwood. I don't really know. I don't know how to play it for you, but I don't know how in tune it is at the moment. I haven't picked it up in a while. Hey, that's not bad.
not the most in tune, but there's a little bit of behind the haystack, an excellent three-part jig that's on my website if you want to learn it. So yeah, I'm per I think it's redwood. I knew at some point, for some reason, it's just I'm blanking on it right now. But East Indian Rosewood back inside, mahogany neck. Pretty sure redwood topper. I don't think it's cedar. And then there's James saying, I think redwood, or heard that redwood is a good match. Yeah, I'm gonna go with 95% sure it's redwood. I've gotten, uh, email to Stefan Sobel that I think he tells me what, what it's made out of. What is the down up pattern for waltzes? Great question. Uh, it's down up, down up, down up, down up. So it's just there's three. So one, one cycle of down up equals a quarter note. So let me say, uh, that's a good waltz. Down, 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 down. Down, down, <laughs> It's hard to do. Down, up, down. If you have a, a waltz going, yeah, da, 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 you might fall into patterns where if it's like quarter eighth, eighth quarter eighth, eighth quarter eighth, well that'd be it wouldn't be a, uh, a waltz quarter eighth, 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 eighth quarter eighth. But the, the underlying pattern is down, up, down, up. Anything over four in the time signature, so a waltz is three, four. Anything over four or two is going to be uh, down, up, down, up. And anything over eight, well, right. <laughs> how should I put that? Six, eight is down, up, down, up, down, up. Uh, sorry, six, eight is down, up, down, down, up, down. Twelve, eight is also down, up, down, down, up, down. It's a slide. Um, everything else, for the most part, is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Yeah, Heidi says, I like Flop Your Mule. Me too. That's like one of my favorite tunes of all time. You can really rock. Yeah, Brianne says, uh, I can be so self-conscious about my playing, trying to get over the nerves as they make me play worse. That's... That's the truth. That's that's the common experience. No musician has not experienced that, as far as I know. Um, a, f a friend of mine in Maine has a great T-shirt that he makes of a little house with some musical notes floating out of it, and all the T-shirt says is, "I played it better at home," because everybody knows that experience of like you know you you're sitting by yourself playing a tune, and you're having a great time, and then you go to play it with somebody else, and the whole thing just falls apart. Scott says, I want to dive in and learn mandolin. Definitely do it. Any suggestions for which type of mandolin I should purchase? In general, um, I would look for an A style, F hole, or, or oval hole. Kind of a, I've got some lessons on like the different sounds between F, F and oval hole. Uh, F hole, A style mandolins are a little easier to find. A style is going to be uh, kind of more bang for your buck. I like the Kentucky KM150 or the Eastman 305. Um, they've gotten so much more expensive over the years. When I, back when I started the channel, it was like 250, 300 bucks to find one of those new, and now it's like $500. Um, I would stay away from like instruments you don't know about on eBay and buying from Amazon, because those are just gonna be like sent in a box from the factory and no professional is gonna have looked at them. Uh, you can get lucky, but you can also get unlucky. You'll probably get unlucky a lot more of the time. Um, so look at websites like Elderly.com, Elderly Instruments, um, or the Mandolin Store. And also look on the Mandolin Cafe Classifieds, or uh, in your kind of local Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. If you want to buy, buy and use is great because it's like, you know, buying a used car. Except sometimes, you know, people will, if you buy used, the instrument probably 
might like it has the uh, has the potential to be in good shape because somebody's already gotten it and putting the work in to make it play its best. Um, Ant Man says, and my musical friends always want to play faster and faster. That's the thing, you know, like, um, that's a common thing too of like playing playing music publicly is you, your sense of like speed regulation goes kind of haywire, and you you tend to want to like speed up. Um, a great thing to practice is you know. Playing in public, and this is something I'm always trying to work on because my speed regulation in public is also not really as dialed in as I would like it. So I'm always trying to play, like, can I play at 90% of the speed that I'm comfortable with in public? Um, generally, you know, that's going to sound a lot better and be a lot more fun than having everybody in the group kind of pushing a little bit and struggling. Um, you know, if you can dial it back for yourself, if you're leading a tune... Um, Dial it back to 90% and everybody is going to be more locked in. It's going to be much more musical um, if you're not um, trying to complicate things by playing a lot faster than everybody's comfortable with. Arshna says, uh, I worry about ruining the session. You can't ruin a session unless you're sitting there like being willfully um like loud and like you know trying to cause a problem you, you may you may run a set of tunes into the ground that you started if you didn't start a set of tunes maybe sit back and play quietly enough that everybody else can do their thing if you're not super confident with the set of tunes um if you start a set of tunes and it all falls off the tracks it's happened to everybody if somebody says they've never had a set of tunes fall off the tracks, they're lying. <laughs> uh, I've seen a lot of my heroes drive tune sets into the into the ground, and it's it's a heartening experience to see. Nobody wants to do it, but everybody does it. Uh, Joe says, how do you find local jams? I feel like nothing is happening in Orange County. Um... That's a good question. I would, you know, ask on Mandolin Cafe. There's, there's like a jam and local meetup section on Mandolin Cafe and say, hey, here's where I am. I would love to know about some music in my area. And really, it's the hard thing is just finding the first one. Because then, you know, you go to a bluegrass jam and you're like, all right, this is cool. And then there's some people there who are like, oh, hey, do you play Irish music? Like, I also play a little Irish music and there's this thing going on over here. Um, it's, it's The hard part is finding that first one. And then things kind of expand rapidly from there. James says, I want to start learning Irish style guitar accompaniment, but I realize it isn't particularly traditional. I heard a Scottish uh, guitarist, Jen Butterworth, say he's been asked not to play those chords. Yeah, the world of like, um, uh, Irish accompaniment is is kind of a tricky one. It, it depends on what like the melody players want to hear. Sometimes the melody players don't care. There's just like a line between being like really modern and really straightforward and I don't really know how to speak to that too much. I just try to like play it simple if I don't hear uh, like if I'm going to a session with a accompanying instrument like a guitar, tenor guitar, bazooki. Um, I usually start out by playing, like, really conservatively, a lot of one four five, no crazy rhythmic stuff going on, and then maybe I'll sprinkle something in, and if I don't get any hairy eyeballs, then I'll, uh, I'll, you know, know that, okay, maybe I can be a little more outgoing with my chord choices and things like that. Um, but if, if you, you know, if you play it real straight ahead with, like, standard chords and standard um, you know, rhythmic patterns. That's probably a good, a, a good safe way to start. The Everest Productions, good to have you here. Welcome. 
Would you hang a hanky over your strings to mute them at a jam? I would not. I think there's, you can practice playing quietly. Like I can play, uh, Wish Before Breakfast. You know, practice playing really, really quietly. It's a great thing to practice. How loud can you play? How quiet can you play? And kind of doing that and getting a sense of how much that's bleeding into the overall group sound is a great thing to practice. Uh, wanting to learn chop chords, but it looks difficult for me at least. A very common uh, feeling. There's a lot of chop, so the chop chord, the classic bluegrass chop chord, is this big bear of a chord. So like starts with your G chord, then ring finger on the fifth fret of the D string, and the big killer is the seventh fret on the G string of your pinky. But, uh, so here's this chord, and how I like to play it in a bluegrass situation. And here's the the same thing using two finger chords. So uh, full chords first, and then much more manageable two finger chords. Sounds almost identical. So much of chop chords is about that, is about the chop, not the chord itself. You know, this is a good chord to know, but it's it's not a really a, a chord that you want to like. It's not the only way to play a chop chord. As long as you are only striking the strings that have fingers on them, you can get that chop sound. I've got some lessons on that more in depth on my YouTube channel and website. Alison, apologies, probably not saying your name correctly, says I've joined a live performance with music I had no knowledge of. Thankfully, they usually told me what the keys were, so I could at least do background. Uh, on bass, ooh, bass trombone, though, that's fun. Uh, I wish I played bass trombone. Yeah, I, that's the thing. Um, you know, there's so many different kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I've been saying it a lot now, it's not coming to me. Etiquette, you know, the etiquette of kind of what's acceptable depending on the kind of music. It's totally variable. All right, I'm gonna do a little lightning round here. I'm way behind on the chat. I'll do a lightning round, and then we'll play a little bit of whiskey before breakfast. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna get a little closer to the screen so I can read these faster. Hey Denise, good to have you here. Better late than never. Gus has started mandolin with your channel and wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Gus. I'm glad you're enjoying the website. Getting better and happy each day. Couldn't ask for more. Thanks for chiming in. A lot of talk about good starting mandolins in A style versus F style. Uh, how is the citron tuned? So it's tuned from low to high, D, um, and that's an octave. So the low one is like the D of dad gad, um, kind of drop D guitar tuning. So D in octaves, and then G like an octave mandolin, G, also in octaves, and then D, A, D. So D, G, D, A, D. So that high D is like an E string of an octave mandolin tuned down a whole step. I, I would l love to know how to do a VR concert for the Oculus uh, to do some, some VR traditional music. I have no idea how any of that stuff works though. Denise says, learn Green Hans Jaspons Polska this week. One of the best tunes. My first slip jig. It's actually a, uh, well, it's a Polska. 
it's a Yasbots Polska, but it, it's got that sort of sound of kind of the jig, slip jiggy sound. Um, let's see. I would say don't worry about pick direction at this point. That's a really weird tune to think about. Pick. I don't know how to think about pick direction on that tune. Uh, it's really syncopated. It's really beautiful, but there's like a lot of like, if you try to tap your foot to it, woo, it gets weird fast. Um, so don't, don't worry about pick direction. <laughs> Just try to do what feels natural. And if you have like hangups in the tune, then di like dive into that little moment and say like, oh, can I do something better pick direction wise here? But overall pick direction, I would say don't worry about it. That's a weird one. <laughs> I don't know how to think about that. Brian says, uh, I want that t-shirt. What t-shirt? <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, is this something that I said? Krishnas, <laughs> uh, the curse of the microphone. Play it perfect, then turn on the mic to record and repeatedly fumble. That's the thing. Um, yeah, I still... It's interesting. I'm comfortable in front of microphones sometimes. Like right now, I've gotten surrounded by cameras and microphones. Um, and I've just gotten used to it through doing it. I've done it for over a decade for the for Mando lessons, and I'm just used to it. But then if I'm like sitting down in like a recording studio, I, I'm fairly comfortable. But a lot of sometimes I'll get a little like, oh, this is a different place. Even if it's just like a different room in a house or somewhere I've never been. That adds an added layer. Oh, oh, okay. Now everybody's saying the t-shirt. Yeah, the, I, I played it better at home. I'll see if I can find it. Um, if, if I can find... Oh, there it is. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put a link in the description. So it's my friend Ed Perlman who's a great Scottish fiddle player. His son, Neil Perlman, is also a great uh, pianist. Um, friends from Maine Fiddle Camp. So in the description here, I'm going to post a, a link, edperlman.net slash store. And if you scroll down in there, you can find the I Played It Better at Home t-shirt. Wow, what a deal. It's only it's twelve fifty for a t-shirt and $3 shipping. That's amazing. Uh, anyway, <laughs> a little plug. Hopefully Ed gets some. Say hello if, you, if anyone buys one, if there's like a comment section. Say hello for me. Um, and a quick, wow, I can't read that with that there. All right, let's see. Faster doesn't mean better. That is the truth. The Rogue is a mixed, that cheap Rogue mandolin is... It's tricky. I got one just to make a video on, and I got two that were totally broken in the mail. At the time, they were like 50 bucks. Musician's friend. Excuse me. And I got two that were broken. Sent them back. Got another one that was broken. Sent that back. Got one that actually wasn't broken. And now I'm talking like top totally like caved in as I tried to tune it up. Um, but then, you know, you can find some that somehow make it through and hold up. I've never heard one that sounded amazing, um, or was particularly easy to play, but uh, you can get lucky, and 50 bucks is kind of hard to, I don't know if you can still find it for $50, but. You know, if you can if you can find a cheap rogue that already, that's when like getting one used, it maybe has already made it through the selection process and is a better better place. Uh, anything about Tanglewood, Pilgrim, and Ozark mandolins? I do not. I think those are all... Are you in the UK? Um, I, th I feel like those are from across the pond. Um, but maybe somebody here in the chat. Or Mandolin Cafe forums are going to be a good place to find stuff like that. Alright, I'm still trying to lightning lesson. It's going to go a little long. I might not even be able to get through all these chats, but I'm going to do my best. Ooh, Honky Tonk backing up a Scottish session. That's rough. <laughs> yep.
Yeah, look for Irish and Scottish pubs. Good place to find some Irish music. Ah, Allison. Great, excellent. Good to know. Thank you for the, the name, <laughs> uh, the pronunciation there. Whoa, we got some super chats coming up here. Okay, yeah, so there's the, <laughs> there's the Play a Better at Home. Hope some folks get that. Say hello to Ed for me. Oh, did my audio go out? Hope not. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, good. Awesome. Glad it wasn't my end. There's an awesome. Thank you to Joe and Andrew and Edward and Brianne for the super chats. Very generous. Appreciate it. Helps me do these live streams. Uh, any way you want to support is greatly appreciated. There's the super chat. There's links in the description to PayPal and Patreon. There's a bunch of patrons in the chat. Thank you all so much. Also, as a quick plug, I've been doing some private lessons. So if anyone wants private lessons, a link in the description. I'm using a website called Lesson Face that helps me with scheduling and also allows you so we can record the lesson so you can watch it back later. Really been enjoying it. Teaching on Tuesdays and Wednesdays in the middle of the day, Pacific time. So see if there's any slots open uh, if you want a private lesson. All right, at last of the lightning round and then a little bit of whiskey before breakfast and then I gotta go. Am I doing the Concord Music School Festival this year? Not to my knowledge, but if they ask me to, I think I'm around. Um, woo, hard to go wrong with a $15 Rogue. Yeah, definitely can't complain. Awesome. CM Jones 24 has got a Tuesday lesson. Looking forward to picking with you. All right, whiskey before breakfast. Here we go. I'll play it uh, nice medium tempo. I'll start out with the melody, you play the chords, then I'll play the chords, you play the melody. Here we go. Let's all 
play the melody together one more time. Everybody plays it different, but that's okay, it'll work. Forge my name on that note to Matt and Shannon. Sorry, I'm going to send you there late, but I hope you have fun. I'll try to tune in a little bit over there as well. If you're not sure what we're talking about, look up Shannon Heaton, H-E-A-T-O-N, on YouTube. Matt and Shannon host an Irish jam that's happening right now. Thank you all so much for tuning in. The tune for next week, we've got a couple. King of the Fairies is one that I can never remember, and it's got a million parts. Um... But maybe if I get some time to work that up, I could do that one week. Um, where is my... Uh, behind the Haystack. I think we did that not too long ago. Episode 92 and 102, so let's not do that one. There were some in here that we uh, I was surprised we hadn't done yet. Um, what about the chordal jig? Let's do the chordal jig. That's an excellent tune. Great jig. Gonna have to look up the lesson. C-O-R-D-A-L. Jig. It's on my website. It's on YouTube. One of my favorite tunes. Extremely pretty jig. I want everybody to learn it. So I'm going to make that a tune for next week. I think I'll be around next week. Let me just look at my calendar. Yep, yeah, I'll be here. Um, it's going to be a good time. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you all for the support, the super chats. Also, hey Mike, uh, it was a very fun lesson we did. Hope. Uh, thanks for chiming in here. Oh, Old French is also good. I think we did Old French not too long ago either. Um, but yeah, Cordal Jig will type it out as well. Uh, have a great week and everyone. Great to see you all. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye-bye.